All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Makar Kudash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom to the hopeful elect, pushing his truth in sincerity throughout the four corners of the globe in the sincere hopes of being delivered in these last days. This is the Bobby Yakanan from the GMS England branch. <clears throat> This will be, um, you know, a very brief video inspired by this um, this article, you know, this news that you see here on the screen. Um, this is taken from loudwire.com and um, is entitled, Microsoft is preserving music on glass to be stored in Norway's doomsday vault. Microsoft is preserving music on glass to be stored in Norway's doomsday vault. And, um, you know, some years ago, I had done um, a video in relation to this, um, this doomsday vault that they have, you know, in uh, Norway. And, um, at the time, and, you know, currently what they're still doing is um, storing, you know, an abundance of seeds. I believe they're trying to get every single, you know, seed, you know, known to man inside of this, um, as they call it, doomsday vault. So that, you know, in the, in the event of a apocalyptic scenario you know upon the face of the earth which we know will will indeed you know manifest itself you know in the very near future they can have you know every single seed preserved in the hopes that you know they would survive and be able to um you know repopulate the earth with particular grains now we know, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barshim Yahushai Barshim Akakodash by a way of prophecy that, you know, these plans, you know, these intents, you know, coming from the wicked are vain, all right? Because according to the Holy Scriptures, according to prophecy, when our Lord and our Savior comes back in the midst of World War Three, there's going to be no continuation, you know, of Esau Edom's kingdom, all right? He's going to be totally put out from that day forward, all right? So the earth, you know, will indeed be replenished and beautified and revived. However, it's going to be without the authority and without the power structure, you know, the hierarchy of Esau Edom. It's going to be through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barashim Shai. And the rulers upon the face of the earth are going to be the Israelites, beginning with Yahweh Shai, King David, and the elect of the nation of Israel. All right, that's going to be the order that's going to be established, revered, and uh, respected upon the face of the earth. All right, so it says here, um, Norway is home to the global seed vault, also known as as the doomsday vault which you know this um shows you that you know the powers that be you know these people you know in the world of um you know so-called science and um as they would call it you know um enlightenment you know in their field you know they understand and they know that there's going to be a situation upon the face of the earth that's going to be an, apo an apocalyptic situation, all right? They know that. And they have been preparing, you know, for this um, invasion, all right? Because that's exactly what it's going to be, an invasion from Yahweh Barashim Yahweh Shai. They've been preparing for this invasion for many decades now, all right? They've been feebly, you know, preparing for this invasion, which is going to be to none no effect because you can't possibly prepare yourself to, you know, fight against, you know, your own creator, all right? And that's where, you know, the foolishness of Esau Edom, you know, comes into play. 
into, um, you know, thinking that you can do such a thing. But it just shows you, you know, by the terminology they're using that they understand and they know there is going to be a doomsday. There's going to be a day of doom, you know, upon the face of the earth where a major switch, a major change is going to happen upon the face of the earth. All right. They know that. So it says, um, also known as the doomsday vault and deep inside the same Arctic mountain location, a global music vault will preserve heaps of music stored on glass as part of a collaborative project. Um, Silesa venture by Elia Group and Microsoft, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, as stated in a press release. Elia Group is a venture group commercializing global concepts with our own ventures for mobility, infrastructure, electric aviation, and the global music vault. Together with Microsoft, they've developed a proof of concept glass platter that can store up to 100 gigabytes of data in an incredibly tamper proof manner all right so they are trying to um you know as well as preserve seeds they're now you know trying to you know preserve you know music you know music film you know everything that you know they use you know as form of entertainment you know in this current kingdom they're trying to preserve those things all right and we already know you know they have um you know doomsday vaults you know the elites have these vaults underground where they are going to um you know retreat in time you know of world war three you know a major you know catastrophes and you know biblical events that are going to play out upon the face of the earth all right but as it tells us in the book of amos you know though they dig into hell you know you how about shim yao shai is going to find them all right we are going to find them you know through the spirit and power of you how about shim yao shai and it says um challenging environmental conditions as well as other hazards such as being baked boiled scourged and or flooded without degradation of the data written on the glass all right so they've you know basically formulated this you know invincible glass that's able to um withstand you know according to them withstand extreme heat um water you know and so on and so forth which i guarantee <laughs> it's not going to be able to withstand the heat that you have about shim yao shai is coming with via way of them icbm missiles all right and let me get isaiah uh, chapter 9 and verse 5 real quick because you got to understand that the lord is about to bring severe judgment you know upon the face of the earth by a way of the nuclear missiles all right now this is isaiah chapter 9 and verse 5 and it says for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood all right so this is making reference to how you know war in the ancient world was fought you know you would have your armor you know you would have you know the axe you would have the the, the sword you would have daggers it was very hands-on, all right? It was very hands-on. It was very up close and personal, all right? So you, you had the loud noise, you know, of the clashing of the, um, of the weapons, okay? And, you know, those battles would last for a very long time, which proves that, you know, men were much stronger back then, all right? And were of um, a, a bigger stature, okay? Because the, the artillery that they would actually have to carry on their body you know, it would weigh, you know, a, a very proportionate amount, all right? And they would have to, you know, they would have to be battling in those heavy um, armor, you know, in the very harsh conditions, all right? It shows you men were stronger back then, all right? And it says, and garments rolled in blood, and this shall be, so like, so like, let me read that again, and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire so this war that's coming you know this world war three it's going to be with burning and fuel of fire all right which is making reference to the icbm missiles man all right that nuclear technology okay that's the war 
you know, that's coming, you know, to the world, all right? The war to end all wars, World War Three. And let's get that right quick in um, Revelations 11 and verse 14. And it reads, the second woe is past, which is making reference to World War Two. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly, okay? So the third woe is making reference to World War Three, And it says the third woe cometh quickly. All right. And we can see by surveying, you know, the world and the current, you know, affairs of the world powers today, we can see that World War Three is something that will indeed, all right, play out in our lifetime, you know, in the very, very near future. All right. Because all the stepping stones that lead to that great destruction that is World War Three have already been laid. OK, the offenses have already been caused. And the agendas and the intents of the nations are already in place to facilitate the perfect environment for World War Three to be played out upon the face of the earth, man. All right. And those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, you know, can perceive that, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh about Shem Shai. And we believe that through faith because it's written down in the scriptures. So it must indeed come to pass. Like it tells you in, um, let's get, um, Isaiah 55 and verse 11, right quick, it's Isaiah 55 and uh, verse 11, and it reads, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it, all right, so these prophecies, all right, that Yahweh Shim Yahushai have prescribed and have sent forth are not going to return unto him void. All right. In fact, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shim Yahushai, when the Lord has spoken the thing, it's really already happened. All right. It's really already happened in the spirit. But we are making, we are waiting for the, um, you know, the physical manifestation of it in our time, you know, to play out upon the face of the earth. All right. Anything that the Lord has spoken is already in existence, man. All right. And that's the power of prophecy. That's the power of the words and the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Kudash. All right. Now, let me go back to this article right quick. And it says um, the goal of the project is to achieve and store tens of uh, peta petabytes. One petabyte equals roughly 1,000. Uh, terabytes and one terabyte equals about 1000 gigabytes each year with each coaster size slate of glass possessing a data lifetime of many thousands of years with music able to be encoded encrypted or unencrypted in digital file format all right and this is the pride of Esau Edom all right to actually believe that you know that he's going to be in power <laughs> you know, in thousands and thousands of years time, all right, which leads on to um, Psalms 49 and verse 11, all right, that's the pride of Esau Edom, now it says, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places to all generations, they call their lands after their own names, all right, that's the pride of Esau Edom, all right, he actually believes, all right, his inward thought, you know, his intent is that his kingdom is going to last forever. Is that via various, you know, different methods and means, he's going to, he's going to be able, you know, to, um, to increase and sustain himself, all right, through various, you know, technology that he has in the works, all right? And that's what this whole, um, you know, metaverse is all about, okay? He's trying to preserve himself. He's trying to, you know, find a way to encapsulate the spirit in computer format so he can live forever okay that's what Esau is trying to do on a carnal level all right because he didn't get his birthright he's not going to get the gift and the blessing of to be able to live forever so but he's trying to go about it in carnal means all right by using technology transhumanism so on and so forth all right so i'll read that one more time their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations they call their lands after their own name so that's the pride of Esau Edom you know he actually believes he can sustain himself and um and increase you know the longevity of his kingdom 
and avoid going down, all right? But you can't change the prophecy. The prophecy is already spoken and he saw Edom and his kingdom must be thrown down, all right? So um, let me get um, Second Ezra, <coughs> chapter 7, and um, I'll start from verse uh, 41. Because as the, um, as the uh, building was called, it's called the, um, you know, the doomsday vault. And once again, you know, showing you that Esau, Edom, you know, the wicked elite, they are anticipating a doomsday upon the face of the earth. And doomsday is basically the day of Yahweh Barashim Yahushai, you know, visiting the earth which he made. As also tells us in 2nd Ezra chapter 9 from the top on down. All right. So this is 2nd Ezra 7 and verse 41. And it says, even so now, seeing corruption is grown up and wickedness increased and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Wherefore shall it not be so now? Verse 42, he answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore have they prayed for the weak. But the day of doom, this is the point, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time, all right? So the day of doom, all right, doomsday is going to be the end of this time, the end of the time and the rulership of Esau Edom, all right? That's going to be the day of doom, all right? The day of Yahweh Shim Yahushai visiting the earth which he made. And it says, and the beginning of the immorality for to come, wherein corruption is past. And that's it, all right? When Yahweh Barashim Yahushai makes his return, Esau's rulership is going to be stomped out. There's going to be a new regime, all right, a new order, righteous order upon the face of the earth, okay? And people are going to feel that, you know, you're going to feel that power. You're going to know that there's a new system, a new law system upon the face of the earth that you're going to have to abide by, okay? It's going to be known throughout the four corners of the globe. All right, because we're going to have to teach the other nations how to live. OK, that's what's going to actually happen. You know, Isaiah 2 goes into that. All right. So this is, you know, what the times we're living in right now is a very, very exciting time to be alive in these last days, man, because we're literally in the midst of major prophecies coming to pass. All right. Now, with that, Lord willing, this um, lesson was edifying. And until the next time, I'll say... Shalom.